Hello, I'm Frost, and in this video, I'm going to be covering the PC real-time strategy game, Artificial Extinction. And it's going to be a Let's Play Level 1, Getting Started, and Beginner Tips, all rolled into one. All right, before we jump in, I'm just going to say straight away that this little drone, uh, the AI, loves to talk. In fact, he talks more than my auntie does, which is saying a lot. So at the beginning of the game, I won't actually be saying too much because I don't want to be talking over him all the time. Uh, and so therefore I'll be following his actions. And then once we get about 20% of the way into the game, then I'll start getting more involved in terms of uh, providing tips and so forth. Okay, so uh, now we can get started. I'm initializing your heads up display now. Life support. Online. Navigation system. Online. Telemetry. Online. Resource management. Online. Weapon systems. Online. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do. Monitor. Good. Now open your construction menu and build a miner. Place the miner on the fuel deposit. Once the fuel level reaches 100%, we will have enough fuel to travel to a safer location on the planet. Only one miner can. Good. Now open your control menu and I recommend you build two metal miners. Place the miner on the metal deposit. Good. We need metal to build things. You can put up to five metal miners on this resource but use your metal carefully at the beginning. It's your choice. Next, we need to put a miner on the energy deposit and start so collecting energy. So he just energy. doesn't stop talking. Energy is marked in blue on the map. Move to the energy deposit. Right, so what I was just showing you there is that you've got to make sure the little light is on when you put the miner down. If you put it in the wrong place, there's no light, and then your miner is not actually effective. Use the E key, that's E for echo, in order to interact. Okay, so I now need to go off and uh, gather my energy. Uh, we're using the WASD keys, so, you know, Whiskey, Alpha, Sierra, um, Delta. <laughs> now open your construction menu and build a miner. Right. Place the miner on the energy deposit. That Remember, we need metal to build weapons, energy to power them, and fuel to be able to escape. The next thing we need to do is build a sniper sentry weapon to defend our miners as they work. A good spot for a sentry weapon would have a clear line of sight facing a vulnerable direction. Choose a spot, open your control menu and build a sniper sentry. I am made of a composite metal foam which can absorb 80 times more energy than steel. Your weaponry is ineffective against me. I wouldn't waste your ammunition if I were you, you're going to need it. I knew what I was going to do. So you can't shut him up by shooting at him. <laughs> All right, okay, so we're kind of getting in place now. So I've put down my first um, sentry. And so all you do is you just hit the C key, hit sniper sentry, and pop him down. Now you can see down on the bottom right-hand side here, I've got my energy, which is produced by these uh, towers over here. I'm detecting a heat signature due north. Analyzing battlefield. I advise at least four sniper sentries, two energy miners and two metal miners. We need to hurry. Right, so um, energy is produced by these guys over here. The metal is produced by these little uh, mining facilities over there. And then we have one fuel mining facility. We can only make one of those. And that essentially sets our timer for what we see down in the bottom right hand corner here, which is at 8% at the moment. So we need to get that to 100%. Your rifle has two firing modes. Long range is the most accurate, but short range has a higher rate of fire. You should switch depending upon the target's range. Right, so we've got our four uh, sniper sentries down, which is the basic that you need to get started. Ideally, for the future, you don't really want them all in one line. So I recommend kind of put them in a more haphazard way. Uh, this comes up more later when you have bombers, uh, but it's good to get into the habit now. So there you go. So just sort of spread them out a little bit. Now, the main thing you're going to need is you're going to need this metal. Now, the metal is the thing you're going to run out of the Long most range often. sensors have detected a dormant terraforming robot 1,000 right. meters to the north. I don't know if it's hostile or not, but it's time we studied it. Right. I am able to take control of your heads up display and display images to you. Okay. Transmitting to your heads up display now. Right, I'm gonna skip past this cinematic. Okay, so the uh, cinematic's gone. You're going to need more sniper sentries. <laughs> Try building free. In the meantime, enemy advancing towards <laughs> us from the north. Enemy ETA and six. You see what I mean about talks more than my RT, right? Are booting. They are all coming. You must stop them or everyone will die. This is not an exercise. I am disengaging all firing safeties, live ammo levels full, lethal forces authorized. Enemy ETA in 30 seconds. Consider overlapping fields of fire, line of sight, flanking positions, sentry formations. Use the terrain to your advantage. 
You must create a robot killing field if you are going to survive. I just want to shoot him again. The enemy is targeting our sentries instead of you. Keep enough sentries working so that they consider the sentries more of a threat than you are. I am starting my battlefield analysis algorithm, displaying our defensive strength on your HUD now. Build and repair as many sentries as you can to keep this indicator in the blue. Right, okay, I can finally speak. So um, essentially what we want to really focus on is getting these metal uh, miners as many as possible nice and early in the game because you're going to need plenty of miners. So what I recommend is that while we've been waiting for him to, to finish talking, uh, basically we had plenty of metal. So it takes 30 metal to build one of these miners. So we've got at the moment four uh, metal ones and we want at least two or three of the energy ones. So the metal is necessary to build them. The energy is for how many you can actually have running at the same time. So at the moment you can see I've only got 10 energy left. So I could only build one more sniper sentry and then I'd run out of energy. So if I build now another miner, pop it down, you can see I've now got 60. And what we're going to do is I've got 41 metal. So there we go. So I can pop that down. There we go. So 110 energy. So that's looking a lot better now. And you can now see that my sniper sentries are doing their job. Down in the bottom left hand corner, you can see there's four blue squares. I'm going to make sure I don't get hit. There's four blue squares down in the bottom. So that represents my four snipers. Those will change to yellow and then it will change to red as depending on the damage that they receive. And then we've got four different types. You can see we've got sniper sentry. First tank destroyed. There are many more coming. Keep working. So on the menu, as you can see, so like I was saying, you can instruct me to repair any damaged items for you by opening your construction menu and choosing repair. You can also repair, deactivate or recycle items yourself when close to an item. That's five metal miners working now. That's the maximum we can use at a time on metal. Okay, so I now have my five miners down, which is the maximum that I can do. And four energies should do. So there we go. So I've literally just got the right amount of uh, metal at the same at the time. So there we go. So I'm fully stocked up on my energy now and metal uh, production. So that's pretty good. So as I was saying, down the bottom left hand corner, we have four little boxes for the sniper sentries. We're then going to have the anti air. Enemy is targeting our sentries instead of you. Keep enough sentries working so that they consider the sentries more of a threat than you are. All right, then we have our gun sentries, which are going to come later, and the MLRS, which comes later. And then in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see we've got the rifle, and we have 11 and 48. So 11 is my long-range ammo, uh, which you change with the L key, L for Lima. I am detecting an which... incoming air target. I was afraid of this. I am surprised how quickly they are trying to adapt. Our sniper sentries are not designed for air targets. Watch out. I don't know if these drones are weaponized. So as I was saying, we've got long and short ammo. Uh, right click the mouse button, we get the zoom. Your range is about 150 kilometers or 150 to 180 for the long. So you can see if I was trying to shoot now, my uh, ammo is just not going to reach. It's a little bit short. So it seems to be like 150 to 200 our and then using the L key we can change from short to long confuse our targeting system we must also adapt I am designing an anti-aircraft sentry now but it will take me a couple minutes hang in there use your rifle and try and shoot down some drones long range repairing sentries okay so you can see I've got a sentry that's yellow at the moment uh, you can set your drones to automatically repair I'll do that again put your C sentry. key and hit repair. If you hit summon, what that will do is it will actually just stop your drone from repairing your sentry. So if you're really short on metal, then that's something you'd want to be doing. You can tell which needs repair from the light at the top. Right, so the green light means they're okay, the yellow light means they need to repair, the red means they're about to be destroyed. So you can see the repair drone's busy doing his, his business there. He's actually stopped talking for a little while, which allows me to talk. So um, the first thing, obviously, with the tip here is you can see, don't be in a rush to build loads of items. You only need, these things can be built in an instant. So you can react pretty quickly to uh, circumstances. So now that I've got plenty of uh, metal and I've got plenty of energy, I'm going to start dropping these snipers down. There you go, I'm going to drop another one over here just to uh, boost my levels. And then I'm going to put in two AT aircraft to deal with these uh, scouts so that my... The anti-aircraft sentry weapon system will target any airborne threats, including drones. 
bombs, mortars and missiles. The targeting system predicts the threat's flight path, prioritizes targets, activates a warning system and computes a firing solution all autonomously. It fires 10 self-destructing tungsten rounds per second at 700 meters per second. Its burst fire spread intentionally increases target impact success rate. Stand clear of these sentries when they're operating for your own safety. Analyzing battlefield conditions. At this point you should have at least 6 sniper sentries, 2 anti-aircraft sentries, 2 energy miners, 2 metal miners. More is better. Okay, so as you said, more is better, uh, but not too many. So I want to keep always some energy in uh, store, depending on where the enemies come from, I can then move. So you can see, for example, right now, just behind us, you can see we've got one coming over the hill. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit two and use the claymores. Now the claymores I don't recommend using too much. Target detected at heading one, one, two degrees. Our sniper sentries won't have enough time to destroy them before they reach us. I am designing a new sentry to counter their strategy. It will be ready in 10 seconds. Use your rifle. Hold on. Short range. Machine gun sentry ready. Open your construction menu and build a machine gun sentry. Right, so I'm going to build a machine gun sentry as it requested. I normally put them in kind of a blind spot. The machine spot. gun sentry weapon system is designed for short range targets where high rate of fire is the priority. It fires five incendiary armor piercing rounds per second in five round bursts. Its effective range is only 100 meters and should be used tactically in close quarters terrain or under the cover of longer range defenses. Place strategically, they are extremely effective. So as you can see, I'm literally going to pop them just on the side here because the robots are going to be coming over the edge of the hill. And it just puts them a little bit out of sight. It means that they're not the primary target. And then we can use a sniper sentry here, uh, pop it just right in front so that it starts shooting as soon as it comes over the hill. And then we can see that something needs repairing. Uh, let's go and have a quick little look. Uh, I think there we go, my repair drone's taking care of it. So, as I was saying, we want to keep energy in store, we want to keep metal in store. We then don't want to be using the claymores too much because they're a one-time use. Repairing sentries. You can stop me from repairing sentries to save metal by pressing the summon button on the sentry menu. Right. But that leaves our sentries vulnerable. I suggest two or even three machine gun sentries to cover that flag. You can pick up metal from destroyed enemy robotics to use for repairing and building more sentries. So as I was we are in big trouble. Long range sensors have detected a massive wave of enemies coming, both air and ground targets. I estimate our chances of survival, with our current defenses, at 6%. I must design a more powerful weapon system. Analyzing all possibilities. Give me 20 seconds. Hang on. Analysis complete. I have designed a new weapon for short bursts of extremely effective firepower. It should be placed in a well-protected position behind the sentry weapons but still have target line of sight. Open the menu system and build the MLRS. Okay, now the thing you need to be aware of with the, with the MLRS is first of all sometimes there's a bug where you build it and the actual game doesn't remember that you've actually built it. Now, the MLRS has a guided multiple launch rocket system capable of launching 48 fire and forget missiles. Each missile contains a 9 kg thermobaric explosive warhead which creates a pressure wave upon detonation to destroy its target. The laser guided missiles have a range of 1000 meters and fires one missile per second. Once the 48 missiles are fired, there is no way of reloading it so use it wisely. Okay, so I don't know if you heard that. Essentially what it said is that there's only 48 missiles, so the way you use it is that you go up to it, come up to it, hit C and activate. The light will go green, but it only has 48 rockets or 48 missiles. So if you just leave it now and walk away, it will just use up all 48 when not necessarily the best time. So the, the main purpose of it is that when you think you're going to be overwhelmed, then that's the time to kind of use your MLRS and it's going to do loads of rapid fire, shoot off loads of missiles. And as you can see right now, if I look at the main map, uh, let's have a look, there we go. I've got like three incoming and there's four coming later. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to now just go in here and deactivate, switch it off. And then that way it's now kept some of its rockets for a little bit later. We're going to check up here, see my uh, my two sort of main guns here with my sniper there seems to be taking care of anything that comes over the hill. So that's all good. So the next thing we're going to do is because we've got so much metal, 
is we're going to do upgrades. Now upgrades are really important because upgrades will give you much better damage and do more damage uh, over time. So for example, these snipers, if we upgrade them, they get the armor piercing rounds. Oh, oops, I gotta make sure I don't get shot. There we go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna upgrade all these guys. And the benefit of upgrades Century upgraded to armor piercing rounds. Century upgraded to armor piercing rounds. So the bet Century upgraded to armor piercing rounds. The benefit that you get from upgrading is it doesn't use any more energy. So rather than building more more units, you're better off doing an upgrade. It will cost more in metal than actually building a unit. Oh, hang on, I haven't selected it properly there. Let's have a look. There we go. It goes sort of highlights blue when it's uh, you've got it selected. So as you can see, I'm totally in control of the situation at the moment. Everything is absolutely fine. All my snipers are blue. All my air sentries are blue. My gun sentries are all blue. Uh, uh, now producing ammo. Uh, so pretty claymores. If I click claymore, you'll see that it takes 10 metal to create a claymore, which is the same as creating a sniper sentry. So you really don't want to be using those unless it's a last resort. Also make sure you stay at the back so you don't get hit. <laughs> All right, now you can see I'm not shooting very much. You don't really need to. Uh, I always keep it on short. So if you can, there you go. I always keep it on short and use it for when I have to deal with like situations where I think I'm going to be overrun. And then I can just come in from the side. There we go, get a few shots off. And uh, that's pretty much the only time you should be shooting is when you think your guns are not going to be able to do the job for you. So you can see there's a lot of stuff incoming now. So I'm going to basically activate my MRLS again, MLRS. There we go. And that should uh, help cover the situation. You can see, but where I've placed everything also is quite in a small group together. The reason why I've got everything kind of close together like this is because my repair drone can then get to everything easily. If you space them out too much, then your repair drone is going to be flying backwards and forwards and not going to be able to get to your sentries in time to provide the repairs. So this way, this is a much more effective way of doing it. So as you can see, my MLRS there is doing, uh, doing its job. And it seems to still got any rockets left. Yeah, it's still shooting a few. So that's good. There is another strong way to do this. I am analyzing all our options. I am checking the ship's energy levels. Yes, I have a solution. The MLRS has not had enough time to recharge. We can't use it. I can call the ship for air support. It has enough energy for one airstrike per day. The ship has four high power cannons with self correcting motion predictive targeting. Call in an airstrike in five seconds. Four, three, two. Okay, one. so Activate. as it said, my MLRS well has done. run out. Long range sensors are showing low activity for the next three minutes. Let's get our sentries repaired, built and positioned as you think is best. I need to use this time to further your training. On the construction menu, I'm sure you realized you can build ammunition and I have just designed a type of claymore mine that should help defend our position. I have programmed these claymore mines to only be detonated by the enemy tanks, but the blast would kill you so be very careful. I have noticed the enemies are not targeting you. They are focusing all their energy on our sentries. You should be able to sneak up towards the enemy tanks and lay mines in their paths. Perhaps you could make a defensive perimeter in case they get too close. All right, so <laughs> now the AI stopped talking. I haven't called in the airstrike because as you can see, there was nothing close by. Uh, so there was really no point in doing so. And uh, let's get this off my screen. There we go. Now this has gotten a little bit close, but it shouldn't be there. So let's uh, take care of him. Oh, make sure I don't get two shots. There we go. So what I'm going to do is, because one slipped through, I'm going to pop another gun up here just to make absolutely certain. I'm going to put it on the other side so it flanks a little bit more. So we're going to put a nice heavy gun there. There we go. Right, that should stop them from uh, sliding through anymore. Now, I didn't activate my airstrike simply because there wasn't enough stuff to shoot. So you can know it's only a once per round thing. And so it's therefore best to hold it back to a point when you think there's going to be an issue. So we're now at 72%. As you can see, we're still under control. We have loads of metal. I could still build loads more if I needed to. And these still get through. I need to make sure this guy doesn't shoot me. Okay, there we go. 
I might need to build some more, yeah, I need to get some more ammo. So let's do that quickly, let's build some ammo. There we go, that was immediate. I'm a little bit concerned as to why things are getting through. They shouldn't be getting through. Oh, we killed one of my uh, one of my guns. So we're going to use we're going to use some snipers and put them a little bit further back. There we go. Right now, this is a good time now to do my strike. So we're going to do our air strike now. And as you can see, they're now going to come over this side over here. So because we've got plenty of metal, we've got plenty of energy. So we've got 50 energy, so I can build the five guns. Descending for an air strike. Calculating attack vector. Designating targets. Beginning target run. Keep your head down. All right, so there we go. So the airstrike's going to come in, and that's going to give me enough time. Oh, that's not really not good. <laughs> I need to make sure I don't get myself shot. I need to get my... Uh, I was a little bit slow in getting my guns over here, so... I really need that to die. There we go. Alright, my health is probably not very good. I can't actually see what my health is. But what we're going to do is we're going to get our gun sentries in here. And get them working hard now. There we go, gun sentry. Okay, that was a little bit foolish of me earlier. I'm going to get some snipers in here as well. There we go, I'm going to pop one here, and we're going to pop another one down, and about there. There we go, now we're getting some coverage on this uh, this hill for when these guys are coming over. There's one more coming over, I've got 10 energy left, so I'm going to build one more gun sentry. I'm going to pick it up and move it into a slightly better position. There we go, I'm going to pop it there. Okay, so that's now, flank is now covered, and what I can do is I can just roll back here, and as you can see, because I've got so much energy built, I have no idea where this gun's sitting here, we're going to grab this one, and what we're going to do is we're just going to recycle it, and that's going to then uh, be available to me, and we can move it somewhere else if we need to. Okay, so things seem to have settled down there. There's a little bit of a panic for a little while. Air support complete. I was a little bit slow getting over to that side. The ship only has enough energy to call in an airstrike once per day. Okay, so let's see how we're doing. Let's look at our map. And we've got one coming from this direction, so at 268 degrees, and another one coming over the rise. So we are in a perfect position to deal with those. That's all fine. We have energy, we have plenty of metal, so we can might as well use this to do some more upgrades. So in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade these guns over here. As I don't have much coverage over here. And make sure these guys are doing as much damage as possible. So you can do two rounds of upgrades on these, from what I can see. There we go. Sentry upgraded to armor piercing rounds. Make sure that's selected. There we go. Sentry upgraded to armor piercing rounds. Sentry upgraded. Double graded fire. Sentry upgraded. Double graded fire. Sentry upgraded. Double graded fire. What's going on over here? Okay, we have seem to have one that managed to slip through the net. I have no idea how he managed to do that. So what we're going to do is ammo empty. Whoop. Open the construction. Let's make sure we build, build some ammo. There we go. One of the sentries is almost destroyed. Make 
make sure we flank properly. There we go. Good. Right, so we got um, a gun sentry that is uh, needs repair. We need to find out where it is. There it is. I can see it's right at the front. So let's zoom down there. So our drone's busy somewhere else, clearly. Just go up here, hit C, hit repair. There we go. Job done. Right, how are things looking over there? Okay, so we can see that those guns are handling things fine. We're at 94%, so we're nearly there. Uh, what I need to do is make sure that I keep at the back here and make sure I don't get shot, because uh, my little heroics earlier were not too clever. I'm calling down our ship now. We almost have enough fuel. Go to the fuel miner. All right, we can see we've got a sentry over there that needs repair. The will eject the fuel cell, bringing the cell to the ship to be able to escape. One of the sentries is almost destroyed. There we go. All right, let's get these repairs done. There we go, and... Job done. Okay, we have a gun sentry that's almost dead, so where's that one? It's not there, it's not there. It must be in the pack at the front here. Or it must be one of the ones over here. Yeah. Yeah, there we go, so he's over here. So we're going to run over and do our repairs. We're at 98% now, so we're pretty much there. Let's get this repair done here. And then we're going to go off and uh, get ready to pick up our fuel. So we're going to head over to the fuel uh, fuel miner. You see our ship has arrived, it's waiting for us. And when it reaches 100%, it's going to drop a little canister of fuel, uh, which is, pro there we go, 100%. it's now done it. Pick up the fuel cell by the fuel miner and bring it to the ship. We need to evacuate now. There it is. So we must pick it up. Our center of weapons to be captured and studied by the enemy. Okay. Beginning self-destruct sequence in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Detonate. Okay, so unfortunately you can't run when you're holding the fuel cell. So you have to be patient. Hope that nothing shoots you. And then once we get it to the ship, we have finished the level. There we go, job done. So I hope you found that useful. Uh, we've completed level one. Like I said, it's very, very difficult to do like a proper tutorial with this because the AI is talking all the time. And if I have it turned off, then obviously I don't do things in the right sequence and then it gets upset with me. So uh, hopefully this way we kind of managed to do it. But as you can see, the main thing is, is don't overbuild too early. Make sure you're building your resources first, get them all in place, get your miners doing their job and then you have all the resources you need to be able to deploy things in the right place at the right time. And then also don't do what I do and put yourself in front of your guns or you'll get shot. <laughs> so there you go, I hope you enjoyed that. Please like uh, if you like what I do, please like the video, hit the bell icon if you wanna be notified of uh, new updates on me from me. And that about wraps it up. Thank you very much, see you next time, bye.